Well, hello everybody, and welcome to part two of my Tamiya Subaru Brat build guide. So in part one, I'd got to the end of step six in the instructions, which meant that I had the chassis halves together, had the front suspension on and working, and I had the front bumper on. Now in step seven, we need to decide what gear ratio we want the car to be, uh, because it depends which uh, spur gear you use here. And you've got three, so you've got a uh, 52 tooth, a 50 tooth and a 49 tooth and then pinions you've got uh, an, a 16, 18 and 19 so it's going to be the biggest pinion gear with the smallest spur gear and vice versa. So I tend to run a lot on flat grass so I'm going for the highest gear ratio so I've got the 19 tooth pinion and I've got the 49 tooth spur gear. So I noticed that Tammy are amongst the crappy plastic bearings, they've given us four actual real ones, so go Tammy. Okay, so the diagram showing us uh, attaching this drive gear onto the spur gear by pushing it through there. Okay. And you've got to somehow get this ring onto the back to stop that falling out. That's actually easier than I thought. So you need to put a bearing in each side. It says to put the grease on the uh, gears. I'll do that in a minute when I'm putting them into the gearbox. Okay, so now we need to make up the differential. So that is that. We need to grease these little bevel gears and drop them in. Okay. Then we've got these parts B2, which I've already cut off, and just got to stick the bearings into those. Okay, then we've got this C16 part, and we need to drop a couple of these MR3s from the metal rod bag into there. Okay, so this is half of the gearbox and they've helpfully stamped R and L on them so you know which one's which and we need the right hand side. So we need to put B1 into there and then these ones we did earlier, B2, it's got a little slot in it which matches up to that there. Okay, so just uh, grease that one up. So it's going to grease the differential. Okay, so we need this large bevel gear MD10 on there, then the differential on there. So I think this thing goes on top like that. So that's rattling around in there at the moment. Once the uh, drive cups are in, then they'll hold that in place. Okay, so I've just got a couple of these BC1s that screw into the backs of these uh, what are they, MR3s. But I uh, can see that's going to fall out as I turn it over. That's what I'm going to put back in again. Put that one back in there. Oh, that's fallen out as well. So step nine, we're going to put the spur gear in that runs on this MR8 spindle. There's five of these little MR8 uh, metal tubes to go into the gearbox case. Uh, I think that's it for that bit. Just need to put some grease on these. So uh, I've got the other half of the differential there. So that will go in there. Then spindle needs to go in there. Then grease this one up. Okay, so this goes on to there. So the little MR12 tubes go in there, there, there. It's there and there. So I think that's all of that now. Okay, the second half of step nine, we need the left hand side of the gearbox. We need these 25 millimeter long screws. We need these eight millimeter long screws. We need another B1. We need that with the bearing in that we did earlier. 
that goes on the end of there. Then that uh, rest on there for a minute. It's a bit awkward while it's not all together. Okay, so I think that's the end of step nine. So step 10, we are installing the gearbox and attaching it to the chassis. And we're using these 10 mil screws and these 30 mil long screws. We're actually taking out these eight mil long screws that we put in earlier. I guess they were just to hold things together in the interim, but um, yeah, so I wish I'd known that because I wouldn't have done them in so tight. But let's just take those out and put these ones in. Okay, so I think that's it for step 10. Okay, so this has got uh, rubber boots that go over the drive shafts and onto the drive cups, which is always a good idea, I think. Uh, I just need to trim down this little bit and these ends off so that the bump there is at the end of each of these. Okay, so close enough probably. Okay, so they're saying to use the AW grease on the ends of these. Let's put a little bit of that. I would have thought normally it's a bad idea to use this stuff because uh, you don't want the dirt sticking to it, but inside the boot maybe it will be all right. So these go through here. Okay, there's quite a lot going on with step 12. So we've got the C6 and C9, which are the suspension arms. Um, we've got the axles. Uh, they're putting plastic bearings. So I'm using metal bearings, uh, two O-rings, two uh, snap pins, and the gearbox joints. Okay, so I'm just putting the O-rings into the axle drive cups there. So that gets poked in by the dog bone. So yeah, that's those in there. Okay, that's those. Okay, so you need to put a bearing onto the axle there, and then that goes through there. They're showing grease because I'm using bearings, I don't need to use the grease. That goes through the arm there. We need another bearing on the other side. And we just need the clip. It's just temporary until we get the rest of the car together so that doesn't fall out. And on the other side, we've got to do the same. So we've got to do bearing into that, bearing on the other side, and the R clip. Okay, then the Drive boot with the dog bone in, it's got to go onto that. Then on the other end, one of these gearbox joints, so it's the one with the spike on it there. And on the other side, the same, so. OK, 
Okay, so I think that's it for step 12. Okay, so step 13, we're attaching these uh, suspension arms and the uh, gearbox joints onto the rest of the car. And it looks like these little bits, uh, MD12, are holding it on. And we just need to put a bit of grease on there where the suspension pivots. Ten millimeter self-tapping screws to hold this bit on. I just noticed I should have uh, put some grease on those before I fitted the metal piece over so I've just taken that apart off camera and uh, put a bit of grease on either side there to help the pivot of the suspension. Okay so I think that's it for step 13. So let's definitely look at how these drive shaft boots fit onto the drive cups because I know Mark Bryan had a problem with uh, his wild one where they didn't fit very well onto the cups. Uh, these don't fit too badly but they could probably benefit from having a uh, cable tie round just to make sure the dirt doesn't go in there. Um, but what I'm going to do is uh, wait till I put the electrics in uh, so I can just check everything's working smoothly before I do it. Now step 14 is starting to build up the shock absorbers so we need four of these Eclipse, uh, we need two of these little pistons, uh, we need four of these red o-rings, uh, two the piston rods, um, two of the caps and two of the cylinders. Also there's two of the V5s there that are the ends and two of the V10s there. Okay we're going to need a little bit of the uh, damper oil here as well. All right so these little V10s are the rod guides and they go into the ends here so that is the bump up that way goes in there and then we need to get a couple of these little o-rings and put them in the end of the cylinder there so it's, that one in. it's just a bit of oil on these okay i'm just going to put the end on loosely until we've got the rod through The other one. Say so these are very nicely engineered. I love the design of these. Okay, so now we want to put one of the E clips onto the rod here. the piston end there on there and another e clip on the end of there okay let's do the other one there showing putting a bit of damper oil on the uh, piston rod there and putting that in what I tend to do actually is to put my finger over the end of there and uh, pour some in the bottom of here just makes it uh, easier to get the bubbles out later so we can tighten that up a bit that's pretty snug anyway let's do the other one So they're showing uh, putting the ends on now because I've got some oil in there. I'm going to uh, go to the next step where we put the tops on and then come back and put the ends on. Okay, so for step 15 we need a couple of these oil seals, uh, a couple of the cylinder caps and there's a couple of the V9s there. just need to uh, make sure there's no 
bubbles in there. If we just do a little tiny bit more oil. Okay, so let's put the seal on. over the top. They seem to do it with the piston at the bottom so I'm doing that. Then need the V9 through the MS4 and screw that on there. That's quite slippery to tighten up so it's going to get tissue to get some grip on that. Okay, so I've got a bit of rebound on this, so I might just undo it with the piston pushed up a little way, just a little, a little bit more oil out. I don't think it's bad to have a little bit of rebound, but yeah, I'll just try and get some of the oil out of there. So that's working nicely there, it's damping definitely, it's very smooth. Tiny bit of rebound just at the end, but yeah. Be with that, just do the other one. Judging by the previous one, I'm just going to do this with the piston sort of about halfway up and see how it feels. I think they are near as damn it exactly the same. Okay, so just going back to 14 to get the rod ends on there. We'll show putting a bit of paper around to protect it. I just grip it at the very bottom because that bit doesn't go up there anyway, and I don't think it gets damaged, so that's okay, right. So step 16, we're uh, putting the springs onto the shocks with this C18 part, and then we're putting the shocks onto the car with the step screws. Okay, so put the springs on there, and then these go this way up. Nice. Actually, one thing I'm going to do before I do anything else is to find the bit that uh, holds the battery cover shut because that's really annoying me. Okay, I found what holds the battery cover shut is this little peg here, B3. So let's pop that in. Okay, I'll stop that rattling about. Okay, so looking at the picture, the shocks go this way around and they join between that hole on the chassis there and the top of the suspension arm there. Get them on with these step screws, which are the BA ones. Okay, just do the other side. Okay, yeah, that works. Let's see if they feel the same. Yeah, they feel like they've got about the same amount of spring each side. Yeah, that feels really good. Okay, this seems like a good place to stop part two of the build guide. Next time we'll be getting the motor in and the electronics. But for now, thanks ever so much for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs>